Hey everyone, it's Nick. Welcome back to my channel. What if there were a single index fund with exposure to stocks of 9,000 companies across 49 markets around the world? We're in luck because there is such a fund. It is the Vanguard Total World Stock Index. There is a mutual fund version, ticker VTWAX, and an ETF version, ticker VT. This is a great investment option and could even be your entire portfolio. We're going to start by looking at the key details of this fund. Afterwards, we'll discuss the pros and cons of using this single fund versus investing in separate US and international stock indexes. Before we get started, if you get value from the video, make sure to smash the like button to support free financial education. Then subscribe so you don't miss future videos. Let's start by talking about the fund's strategy. Whenever you consider buying a fund, you should read the fund's prospectus. The prospectus is a document which explains the investment strategy, risks, and other details of the fund. For Vanguard funds, you can find a link to the prospectus under the product summary on the fund's page. For strategy, the Vanguard Total World Stock Index attempts to track the performance of the FTSE Global All Cap Index. This index is maintained by FTSE Group, which is a company owned by the London Stock Exchange. The way this works is Vanguard pays a license fee to FTSE to use the index as the basis of the Total World Stock Index. The FTSE Global All Cap Index is a market cap weighted index representing performance of large, medium, and small companies globally. It covers both developed and emerging markets. So what does market cap weighted mean? Market cap is the total value of something on the market. For instance, Apple has the highest market cap of publicly traded companies at $1.93 trillion as of March 31st, 2021. The market cap of all stocks tracked by the FTSE Global All Cap Index was $69.83 trillion on March 31st, 2021. Since this is a market cap weighted index, Apple is the largest holding at 2.77%. This is Apple's market cap of $1.93 trillion divided by the total market cap of all stocks in the index, which is 69.83 trillion. As companies change in value, their weight in the index changes accordingly. I'll put a link to the FTSE Global All Cap Index fact sheet below. Next, let's look at the principal risks outlined in the prospectus. The first is stock market risk. Stocks are one of the most risky types of investments. Since this fund invests in international companies, it also has country or regional risk, emerging markets risk, and currency risk. With index funds, there is always the risk that the fund does not match the performance of the index it's tracking. This is because most funds don't buy every single company in the index. They use statistical sampling techniques to keep costs low, but still try to match the index's performance. Index ETFs also have some other risks listed here, which I won't cover in this video. You can read the prospectus to learn more. Let's look at the current composition of VTWAX. The top regional allocations are 59.8% in North America, 16.6% in Europe, 12.2% Pacific, and 11% in emerging markets. In terms of countries, the top are 57.1% in the United States, 7% Japan, 4.5% China, 4.1% UK, and here's a list of all of the other countries. The top companies in the index are Apple, Microsoft, Amazon, Alphabet, Facebook, Taiwan Semiconductor, Tesla, Tencent, Berkshire Hathaway, and JP Morgan. These reflect 13.2% of the 
of the fund. The rest is distributed across more than 9,000 additional companies globally based on their market capitalization. The mutual fund version, VTWAX, has an expense ratio of one-tenth of a percent, 0.1 percent. This is the fee Vanguard takes out of your returns to pay for the cost of running the fund. This works out to $1 per year for every $1,000 invested. The ETF version costs a little less at 0.08% or 80 cents per year for every $1,000 invested. This is a phenomenal deal to buy and manage nearly 90,000 stocks in 49 markets and dozens of currencies. Let's look at the performance. We'll look at the ETF, ticker VT, since it has more history. Since the ETF was created in 2008, just months before the 2008 market crash, it has delivered an annualized return of 7.69%. The 10-year annual return is 9.46%. If we compare the 10-year return to VTSAX, the Vanguard Total U.S. Stock Index, the U.S. Stock Index gained 13.79% annually over the past 10 years. This is because international stocks have recently underperformed U.S. stocks. Some people see this and they think, why would I invest in international stocks when U.S. stocks are doing so much better? This is a subject of heated debate even amongst experienced investors. I made a video on this where I tried to objectively represent both sides of the argument, look at some historical data, and share my opinion. I'll put a link up here and below. Before we talk about the pros and cons of this fund, let's briefly talk about the principles of index investing. There are millions of investors processing all the available information to try and determine the price of stocks. Most people who buy index funds do so because they want to leverage the collective knowledge of these millions of investors. They recognize that the market overall is better at pricing stocks than they are. Instead of spending hours searching for needles, they just buy the whole haystack. It gets interesting when you get to international stocks because many people that follow the indexing strategy don't follow the same logic for global stocks. If markets are good at pricing stocks within the US, why wouldn't they be good at pricing stocks globally? I'm not going to start a debate in this video. If you want to go in depth on arguments for and against international stocks, check out my other video. Let's assume you're interested in investing in international stocks. Is the total world stock index a good choice? Let's discuss some of the pros and cons. First, the pros. It is a great, simple, well-diversified index fund. You could literally own this single fund for your entire stock allocation. It simplifies the U.S. versus international decision. Instead of determining which proportion of your portfolio to allocate to U.S. and international, you just let the market decide for you. There's no rebalancing. Since this fund tracks the FTSE, it will automatically reflect the global market cap. Here is a chart of the U.S. versus international allocation from 1970 to 2018. You can see the allocation shifts a lot you won't get tempted to try and market time by increasing or decreasing your international stock exposure based on the latest news or gut feelings. Most people are terrible at market timing. This fund removes that potential risk. These are what I see as the main pros. Now let's discuss some of the cons. The biggest con is actually one of the pros depending on how you look at it. Some people don't want to match the global market cap. They may want a home country bias with lower international stock exposure. 
for them, the fun doesn't match their goals. Another con is the fees are slightly higher. While the fees are still extremely low, it would be less expensive to buy US and international indexes separately. If you matched the global market cap with VTIAX and VTSAX, Vanguard's international and US stock markets respectively, your weighted average expense ratio would be 0.07%, which is 30% lower than the 0.1% fee of VTWAX. The ETFs will have a similar difference. If you had a $1 million portfolio, this would work out to about $300 in extra fees each year to use the total world index versus holding separately and rebalancing yourself. One consideration that could offset this difference in fees is if you're investing in a taxable account. Rebalancing could have tax implications if you had to sell some of one fund to rebalance. As we saw, the allocation to US versus international can change quite a bit, resulting in some cost to rebalance in a taxable account. Another con is you lose the foreign tax credit. Funds that hold international stocks have to pay some taxes to foreign governments. The Internal Revenue Code, Section 853A1, allows you to take a tax credit for the amount paid for your shares, but only if the fund has 50% or more of its assets in foreign companies. VTWAX has less than 50% in foreign companies, so it does not qualify for this tax credit. I'll put a link to this section of the tax code below. Note this tax credit only applies in taxable accounts, but it is a minor optimization if you structure your portfolio accordingly. I made a video on tax efficient asset allocation that goes into more details on such strategies which I'll link up here and down below. The last main con I see is tax loss harvesting is less effective with one fund versus two. Tax loss harvesting is a strategy you can use to defer some of your taxes in a taxable account. Let's say you buy a share of an index fund for $100. The value of that share drops to $90. If you sold it, you would have the opportunity to book a $10 loss. The IRS lets you count this as a tax loss, reducing your income by $10, assuming you meet certain stipulations. This is really just deferring taxes into the future, since if you were to then purchase it again, your basis would be $90 instead of 100. If you were to wait 20 years and sell it later, for $200, you would now owe an extra $10 in tax in the future. I'm not going to go deep into the details, but tax loss harvesting is more effective with separate US and international funds, since you'll get more opportunity to take advantage of market fluctuations. Before we get to my thoughts, I just wanted to point out that VTSAX plus VTIAX, Vanguard's Total US index fund and total international index fund is not exactly the same as VTWAX. You may have noticed this since VTSAX has 3,669 stocks and VTIAX has 7,420 stocks. If you add these together, it's 11,089 stocks versus VTWAX with just over 9,000 stocks. VTWAX tracks the FTSC All Cap World Index. VTIAX tracks the FTSC Global All Cap X US Index. Where they differ is in VTSAX for the US stocks. VTSAX tracks the CRSP US Stock Index instead of the FTSC US Index. In my opinion, there is not a meaningful difference, but it is a difference to be aware of. We could really beat this to death 
But the difference between using the total world stock index and investing in the US and international indexes independently is probably not significant enough to be a major concern. As an engineer, I like to optimize things. When it comes to optimization, there are always trade-offs. In this case, you could optimize for your time and just use the total world stock index. This is very simple and easy. You could alternatively optimize for a slightly better return from the lower fees, the foreign tax credit, and the tax loss harvesting by holding US and international separately. I have chosen the latter and hold the funds separately. Another factor here is that many of my investments are in a 401k and HSA. These do not offer the total world stock index as an option. So even if I wanted to simplify my portfolio, I wouldn't really be able to since I don't have that option in some of my accounts. It actually wouldn't simplify that much for me. If you're debating whether to use the total world index versus the separate US and international indexes, in my opinion, you're clearly on the right path. I would support either approach and think it boils down to optimizing for your time or possibly slightly higher return. Thanks for watching everyone. Let us know what you think of the total world stock index in the comments below. Don't forget to smash the like button if you got value and then subscribe so you don't miss future content. Later.